Hi everybody, and happy Father's Day to all the awesome dads out there. In this episode, I'll be loading a couple of sample programs and then we'll watch them execute. If you haven't already downloaded the files from my GitHub repo, you can take a screen capture of this table. It will come in handy for the next segment. This is my version of Ben's favorite sample program. It adds two numbers, initially 28 and 14, but you can change the values stored in either of the two memory locations to add any two numbers. Since the master reset sets the program counter to 0000, it is convenient to have our program begin there. Looking at the first instruction, the upper four bits, 0000, represents a load A register from memory instruction. The lower four bits, 1110, represents the memory location we want to read. The next instruction, 0110, does a lot of work for us. First, it loads the B register from memory location 1111. Next, it adds the A and B registers. Finally, it transfers the sum into the A register. The next instruction, 1000, outputs the contents of the A register to the dual display. The final instruction, 1111, is a halt instruction. This will stop the clock and allow us to view the results. Let's load our program into memory and test it. We'll begin by setting the clock to stopped and the memory to program. First, I'll load the program and I'll remember to set the initial values in locations 14 and 15. All right, next we'll set the RAM to run and we'll press the master reset to reset the program counter to zero and we'll start the clock running. The A register just got its value. And there's our add in the B register and saving the results in the A register. There's the 8 register outputting to the dual display. And last but not least, we just process the halt and the clock is stopped and we can see our answer on the display. Here's another run through, just a little bit faster. This next program demonstrates a few other instructions, including jump. So we'll begin by stopping the clock and setting the memory to program mode. And I will program the instructions in and then we'll give it a test run. And there we go, all set. We'll set the memory back to run mode, press reset to reset the program counter, 
and start the clock. I'll bring down the lights so you can see the dual display better. Oops, don't know what happened to the display there, but we did get an overflow. So at this point, it's looking really good. I still need to find or build a frame for mounting it. And the ribbon cables add a lot of height to the project, so I may have to just custom build something or maybe replace them with something else. Anyway, I'll save that for part seven. I've been following the comments left on Ben's videos, and I feel fortunate to have not run into the issues that some of the others have reported. About the only thing I've changed is to isolate the RAM in plus clock control signal. I don't know if it was necessary, but while I was creating the inverted clock for the T-state counter, I figured, what the heck. So yeah, what about these guys? Well, I actually bought two batches of these. The first batch was fine. They were actually so good, I didn't bother checking the ones in the second batch. Unfortunately, I had already built some of the T-State clock and was just having an awful time getting anything to go in the holes properly. I tested a couple of other boards that I'd already built into the project and had to pull them out and rewire them as well. In the end, I pulled two boards and found two others that were bad before getting enough to finish this project. I still have a few left that I need to check. Well, I've had a blast building this. I hope you've had fun following along with me, and maybe you've been inspired to build this yourself. And as always, thanks for watching.